What's up, everybody? My name is Jason, and welcome to Breaking News. Senator Ben Cardin fights to keep EIDL grant funding. It is Monday, August the 16th, 2021. Please do me a huge favor, give this video a thumbs up. Hashtag EIDL with your comments below. And don't forget, make sure you follow me over on Twitter at Try Small Biz. That's at Try Small Biz, username Small Biz Inc., where I am fighting on your behalf to get you and your family the money that you deserve. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you may have seen in a Speak and See video, a friend of this channel, a speech from Senator Ben Cardin on the floor of the Senate the other day where he voiced his opposition to gutting the idle program of $31 billion and made a rather passionate argument that he's going to fight to get it put back in via appropriations or a brand new bill that'll probably happen in the next month or two once we get beyond this three and a half trillion dollar infrastructure deal. So ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor, pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee, ice cold beer, or chai tea, here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have a confession to make in my rather fancy shirt. I didn't feel like doing this video. The reason is, as I'm sure many of you are toiling with right now, I just watched a speech from the President of the United States. And if you've been around for any length of time, I'm not a partisan guy. I've been doing this channel now for 17 months. And I tore President Trump apart last year. Why? Because he appointed Javita Carranza. She rationed the grants and capped the loans, violated the CARES Act, and in the process destroyed probably two or three million small businesses. I've torn Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer apart, Jackie Rosen and John Cornyn. It doesn't fucking matter if you're Democrat, liberal, or Republican. If you're wrong, you're wrong. But having grown up five minutes from Fort Drum, New York, the 10th Mountain Division of the United States Army, I must say thank you to all our disabled, current and retired veterans, those that are still in the military. I have brothers that were sending me texts uh, and photographs and videos. Uh, Fort Drum's a buzz. Apparently a few thousand of them may be going over as part of a 6,000 troop contingency to surround the airport, basically, get our people, get those in the uh, Afghan army, interpreters, etc., and those that have helped us, apparently over 20,000, find a place to live here in the United States before the Taliban does what they usually do, and we don't need to repeat what that is. My reason for doing this video today is to reinforce what I've been saying now for a year and a half. Extremism in any form is no good. You look up and down your Twitter wall right now, and they either love or they hate what President Biden had to say. That's not honest. I watched the speech. I was not a fan at pointing fingers at President Trump. And the part where he said he had to follow through on his plan when his own generals, as little as a 30 days ago, told him we, we, we should leave a few thousand behind, particularly at both airports. He overrode that. And we now have the scenario we do. However, much of what President Biden said was good. It was true. It was correct. We've been there for 20 years and nation building doesn't work. And if the Afghan troops, even though we did leave air support behind, if they're not going to stand up and fight and if the president or prime minister of the country is going to get on a plane and head to Switzerland, as he apparently did two nights ago. What are we doing there? Most of us, if we're honest, the ending was very sloppy. And I pray with all my heart and soul that the troops can get over there and get everybody out safely. Because if we're to believe the rhetoric coming out of the Taliban, they're not going to slaughter anybody, at least not now. This video may not make sense. I really don't care. I would encourage everybody, if you know a veteran, call them, write them. Many of them are deeply troubled at what they're witnessing. 
My grandfather was in World War II. I have a brother that was a Marine. I have a lot of friends that are active and retired military. They gave their life in service of this country. And to see us shamed and uh, what some are calling abandoned ship in such a sloppy fashion is a real gut punch. So I'm not here to say that Biden is right or wrong. It's like anything else. It's like me, it's like you. There's good and there's bad. There's truth and there's lies. It's been that way with every president since Bush and Cheney got us into this mess in the first place. So whether you're a president that got us in or one that kept us in, they've all got blood on their hands. But my message today is we gotta get to a place where we learn from and we respect the past, but we start living for the now so that we can have a much better future for not only us and our businesses, but our children and our grandchildren. Which is why I would ask each of you, please, at least on this channel and on my Twitter page, try to be inclusive. Try to understand that nobody's got all the right answers. There's good and there's bad of the current administration and there was with the prior. There's mistakes that have been made, big ones, and hopefully it doesn't cost too many lives. But we have to get to a place in this country, or at least on this fucking channel, where we come into the middle. Extremism on the left or the right is no good. We are witnessing by way of the social media and the fake news, as I like to call them, the tearing apart, the dividing of the United States of America into a place that many of us don't even recognize anymore. There are women and young children in Afghanistan that are in one hell of a pickle right now. We have troops. We have those that helped us that are in danger of being slaughtered. And some people are so partisan and it's left and it's right that they can't see beyond their own bigotry, racism, hatred, that lives are at risk. So please, Take a moment to realize how fortunate we are in this country. That we don't have to hang on the side of a fucking plane because we just want to get the hell out of where we were grown up. What an image. Can you imagine people coming to your door? With an AK-47, wanting to know if you had a prior affiliation with the United States of America or the government under the guy who flew, I don't know, to Switzerland. It's an awful mess that we've been in for the last 20 years. And I do agree the time has come to get out. The way in which we handled it, sloppy. Everybody should know that. Mistakes were made big time. But at some point, we have to come together as a nation, as a people, as a small business community, and realize that none of us are perfect. None of us have all the answers. The left isn't always right, nor is the right. We have to come to the middle. We have to be inclusive. We have to understand that if people look different, sound different, sleep different, vote different than we do, that doesn't make them evil. That doesn't make them worthy of extermination. We are not the Taliban. We are not the terrorists. We're supposed to be the United States of America. And if you watch the news or scroll down your Twitter feed, or even probably some of the comments that I'm about to get, you'd think it was some third world country. So I don't know if this video is going to make any sense. And frankly, it doesn't need to. I just want every veteran and active member, service member out there to know, we love you, we appreciate you. Our soldiers did not die in vain.
They did not die in vain. Until next time, thanks for watching. And always remember that I love each and every single one of you.